previous lecture we uh, discussed uh, condition monitoring of uh, rotating machinery. Basically, we uh, try to see whether uh, various kind of faults which uh, reflects in uh, vibration signal, how we can able to uh, detect the uh, various kind of faults in rotating machinery by just looking into the uh, signal either it is in time domain or frequency domain or uh, whether it is uh, orbit plot or, or or maybe waterfall or cascade plot. So, these are the various forms of the uh, plots which we require for uh, analyzing the vibration signal. So, that we can able to identify or locate uh, or basically we can able to detect the fault in various kind of uh, machine elements. Now, in today we will be extending the condition monitoring in a more broader uh, perspective, uh, especially condition based monitoring will be uh, introducing uh, this particular subject in more broader way and we will try to see what are the various uh, 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 tools are available of to perform this and uh, what are the research directions which uh, uh, are there in this particular uh, subject. And, uh, and then we will see a few uh, case studies uh, at the end of this particular lecture. So, in this uh, initially this is the overview of the condition uh, overview of the presentation in which we will be introducing the condition based monitoring even we will give some brief review especially of the requirement of the uh, this condition monitoring few case studies we will try to see at the end. So, coming to the condition monitoring of in industry obviously, uh, any industry we need to capture various kind of uh, uh, signals and there is a vibration signal or temperature, pressure, uh, noise various kind of signal we need to capture and then uh, those signal we need to store in computer and try to analyze those signal and try to correlate various kind of uh, faults which may appear in this kind of uh, machinery and uh, then uh, we can have some kind of database based on that uh, we, we will be having some kind of expertise uh, in the form of uh, maybe heuristic uh, expertise in which we can able to correlate the symptom of the fault and the what type of fault reflects uh, what kind of symptoms. So, to introduce this particular subject the equipment condition monitoring is essentially preventive failures that may cause human injury or equipment damage. So, obviously, uh, it can also enhance productivity if we are maintaining the machine properly product quality will be good life of the machinery will be more. This is uh, the breakdown maintenance. The, so, earlier the maintenance technique was basically the breakdown maintenance also called the unplanned maintenance or run to failure maintenance which take place only at breakdowns. So, when the machine got failed then uh, then you are uh, calling for the maintenance. So, uh, that is uh, call it a breakdown maintenance. A later maintenance technique is the time based preventive maintenance also called planned maintenance which sets a period interval periodic interval to perform preventive maintenance regardless of the health or status of the physical asset. So, whether the machine is fine or not we schedule the maintenance and then we stop the machine and uh, do the maintenance that is called preventive maintenance, but with this we, uh, we unnecessary we stop the machine if machine is healthy and so loss of uh, uh, lo loss of uh, economy will take place because of this. Therefore, more efficient maintenance approaches such as condition based maintenance are uh, being imp uh, implemented to handle the situation. A CMB or condition based maintenance if properly established and effectively implemented can significantly reduce maintenance cost by reducing the number of unnecessary scheduled preventive maintenance uh, operations. So, uh, you can able to see that through some 
monitoring technique we can able to see the condition of the of the machine and if there is unexpected signal coming in into the uh, this kind of uh, uh, gadgets then we can able to uh, plan the maintenance. So, now we will be briefly doing the machinery diagnostics and prognostic uh, implementing condition based maintenance. In this diagnostics I refer to the basically uh, finding what kind of fault is that, what is the severity of the fault uh, and prognostic is whether we can able to a priori we can able to have some indication that the faults are impending or is coming into the machine. If we can able to uh, uh, detect that, that will be a, a real challenge. So, abstract definition of the condition based monitoring uh, is a maintenance program that recommends maintenance decisions based on the information collected through condition monitoring. So, based on information only we plan the maintenance not as a scheduled uh, maintenance one. So, in this uh, there are three basic component in the condition based uh, maintenance program. One is the data acquisition. So, we collect the data at from various uh, uh, sensors and, and then we store that in a computer. Second is the data processing. So, once we have collected a huge amount of data, we need to put them in a proper for form and we need to plot them in bar chart or other kind of uh, formats in which uh, the uh, analysis of the data can be done easily. So, that is the third one. So, once we have uh, uh, done the data processing, then the most crucial part is the uh, maintenance decision making. So, once you have the data, then the experts will analyze that data and then make the decision for the maintenance. So, condition based mo uh, monitoring. So, we will go in more detail of those three component of the condition based monitoring. So, one is the information collection. So, data collected in CMB program can be ca categorized into two main types. One is the so called event data and condition monitoring data. So, there are two type of data. So, event data is that include the information on what on what happened as the installation, breakdown, overhaul etcetera and what the cause causes were. So, what happened and what the causes were. So, that is a some kind of event and or, or uh, what was done minor repair, preventive maintenance, oil change etcetera to the targeted physical asset. So, this is a some kind of event uh, which, which will form the basis of the data acquisition that is event data. Apart from this, we will be having condition monitoring data. These are measurement related to the health condition state of the physical assets like vibration, temperature, pressure, noise. These are the data which we collect that is that fall under the condition monitoring data. Then to collect this data, we have various kind of sensors and in this uh, we can able to see that this is one of the displacement measuring proximity probes. Uh, there are variety of accelerometer which so basically these are piezoelectric based accelerometer which gives uh, vibration signal or the signal voltage signal corresponding to the proportional to the acceleration of the body on which they have been mounted. So, there are various kind of mounting like uh, these are you can able to see this is the base threaded holes uh, are there. So, this we need to fix onto the body or sometimes we can able to glue it. So, various kind of uh, mounting we can uh, we can have in this kind of sensors. This is a handheld vibration meter in which we can able to get either the level of vibration or uh, so simple uh, RMS value or uh, that kind of uh, informations we can able to get about the vibration with this vibration meter. Apart from this, uh, the acoustic measurement is very important. So, these are the typical various uh, shape, uh, various size of the uh, sensors, the microphones and depending on upon the application their choice will be uh, decided and this is the sound meter. So, this can measure the various uh, parameter of the sound like power 
uh, of the sound. Uh, this is another uh, kind of uh, instrument which is uh, called impact hammer or modal hammer. So, sometimes we need to give some kind of small force to the machinery and corresponding to this what is the change in the vibration we want to monitor and this is the purpose of uh, this particular model hammer. The advantage of this is what particular impulse we are giving to the machinery we can able to uh, that also we can able to measure it because there is a force uh, measurement sensor is attached here and the tip of the hammer we can have a variety of tips like rubber tip or aluminum tip or steel tip and depending upon what kind of frequency range we want to impart uh, this uh, this tips can be chosen. This is another kind of uh, instrument which is uh, called vibration exciter so or shakers. So, uh, in this variety of uh, uh, shape uh, various size of the shaker we can have depending upon what kind of machinery we want to excite. So, with this we can able to excite the machinery uh, externally and uh, we can able to choose either the frequency of excitation or amplitude of that we can able to choose or even what kind of uh, excitation force we want to give like sinusoidal or two frequency signal or multiple frequency signal or random signal. So, depending upon the application uh, we can able to excite and then we can able to measure corresponding change in the vibration that uh, basically will in, uh, can be used to find the condition of the machine. This is <coughs> for displaying the the whatever the vibration signal captured through this these sensors we can able to display the signal on this kind of uh, screen that is uh, oscilloscope and in, uh, generally it is it displays a uh, signal in time domain, but uh, frequency domain signal also can be seen in this and uh, uh, apart from this there is a another advanced uh, analyzer that is spectrum analyzer in which exhaustive uh, analysis in the frequency domain of those time signal can be done and various uh, form of the uh, signal in the frequency domain can be plotted apart from the FFT simple FFT or if required we can able to transfer the data into the computer through a data acquisition system and here we can have some kind of virtual instrument. So, depending upon the need what kind of processing we want to do we can able to uh, make our own instrument virtually and this will display. Uh, various form of the signal which we want to monitor. So, this is very handy that whatever the signals we are capturing we can able to directly process it and display on the screen directly online uh, signal we can able to see using this kind of virtual instruments. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, to uh, pinpoint what kind of fault there is uh, giving what kind of uh, signatures and what kind of frequency this kind of uh, laboratory instrument we can able to develop or uh, fabricate in which various rotating components like this is the rotor with the two discs, there is a belt pulley arrangement, gear box, so reserve pocketing mechanism. So, various kind of machine components we can able to uh, design and fabricate and if you want to see the signature, signature analysis of various kind of faults we can introduce in this and we can able to uh, capture them in isolation of uh, other kind of faults. So, that we can uh, study a particular fault in more deep uh, like even various kind of faults in the uh, motor either is a mechanical fault of the motor or electrical fault of the motor that we can able to study. Maybe we can uh, take out the current information from this kind of uh, setup and even the current can indicate what kind of faults are appearing in the motor. This kind of uh, testing can be built to uh, simulate the fault experimentally in their laboratory. So, these are the various kind of faults generally as we have discussed in the previous lecture also various kind of faults we can have and uh, every fault gives a unique frequency in uh, the vibration spectrum and with the help of uh, that unique frequency we can able to identify which kind of fault has appeared in a particular machine. Now, coming back to the data processing uh, that was the data cap, uh, capturing. 
the second stage is the data processing in the condition based maintenance. So, this is uh, the information handling stage of the condition based maintenance. So, we can have waveform data analysis. So, in the waveform we can have time domain analysis. So, various uh, techniques are available. I will be explaining this in the subsequent slide. Frequency domain analysis, FFT, ARMA model, uh, these are auto regressive moving average model, Th these are all time domain uh, frequency domain uh, models. Time frequency analysis that is wavelet transform or short, short time frequency uh, trans transform, this kind of uh, uh, techniques are available to analyze the waveform data such as in uh, vibrations. Uh, another is the value type data like single value variable uh, like temperature or pressure in which we get at one particular time maybe one value. So, that kind of uh, data also we can collect and there are various methods which are available to analyze this. So, various methods which I have described there are listed here. So, uh, describing each of them is beyond the scope of this particular uh, lecture, but uh, some of them you will be knowing like Fourier, fast Fourier transform, short time Fourier transform, wavelet transform, artificial neural network, hidden Markov method, support vector uh, machine. So, these are various uh, techniques by which we can able to process the data and we can have some kind of expert database uh, with us. Then data analysis combining event data and the condition, and condition monitoring data. So, event and the condition uh, monitoring data both we can able to combine because that is very important info information. So, various artificial intelligent uh, data processing techniques are there. Uh, these are the techniques which I described in the subsequent slide. So, these can be used for processing of the data to take out the information from the, the enormous amount of data which comes from the machinery. So, some data are like uh, frequency domain data, free vibration analysis we can able to perform we can able to pinpoint what are the natural frequency of the system. So, predominant peak we can able to collect and that will be our database or as we have seen in the previous lecture for gear, if we have uh, chip tooth of gear then we can have this kind of impulses. So, those informations can be collected. Uh, these are the some of the data type, uh, but we can have more of such type. Then the third stage which is most uh, crucial one maintenance decision support that is the decision making process. So, diagnostic and prognostics are the two important aspect of condition based monitoring program. So, these are the two main component in this third stage which is most crucial stage. So, diagnostic deal with the fault detection, isolation and identification when it occurs. So, basically detection, utilizing that and finding the severity of that and prognostic uh, deals with the fault prediction before it occurs. So, whether we can have a technique before the fault appears into the system or at the beginning at very beginning of the fault appearance whether we can able to diagnose that or prognostic we can able to find that there is a fault appearing that will be the most challenging task. So, diagnostic is a posterior event analysis and prognostic is a a priori event. So, before it happens we need to predict that then we can able to. So, together with the, uh, these two we will be having a complete condition based maintenance program. So, diagnostics we have different uh, statistical approaches like hidden Marco process or uh, artificial uh, intelligent approaches, artificial neural network genetic algorithm, support vector machine, other applications like model based because various kind of fault like unbalance, misalignment, we can have a mathematical model of that. And uh, once we are measuring the vibration from the uh, actual system, we can able to curve it the mathematical model with the vibration signal and try to find out whether the fault is there or if it is there how much is the severity of the fault or the quantification of the fault we can able to do with the model based approach which is actually uh, real research which, which is taking place in the present uh, uh, day. 
on the rotodynamics field. So, this is a very abstract uh, uh, way how we can able to basically diagnose the fault. So, in this particular case we have one uh, we, uh, we have collected various data from the machine and uh, let us say there are n number of uh, such data uh, and uh, those data in mathematics we can able to represent as a n dimensional vector. So, if we have in a vector n number of data or uh, those data may be pressure, temperature, vibration, RMS value various data we can have and we can put them in as a vector in n uh, that will in a n dimensional space it will occupy one particular vector direction. Then, so in this particular case what we will be doing? We will be introducing one fault in a machine at a time and we will be finding ki what is the change of these vectors are taking place. So, these vectors are changing obviously their orientation in the n dimensional space will change. So, the first one is maybe corresponding to one particular kind of fault, this one is for one kind of fault, this is for second fault. Similarly, we can have third fault straight vector, fourth fault in the machine. So, we need to introduce this kind of fault as I have shown earlier some kind of fault simulator in which we can introduce the fault one at a time and we can able to collect the data and uh, that will be the database corresponding to various kind of faults. So, these are the uh, five type of faults if uh, a particular machine can have. So, we can able to first generate this kind of uh, database and once we have this five database for five different fault, then if let us say some unknown fault appears into the system. Then if we have measured all the data and if we plotted in this particular database space, uh, let us say this red one is for, for unknown fault, we measured it and uh, you can able to see that it is close to the fault 3. So, that means, uh, it is representing that that whatever the fault is there in the system which is unknown to the user is actually uh, from database is predicting that there is a fault 3 in the a particular uh, machine. Uh, this is this will happen when there is a single fault. So, uh, the, the matching of these two vectors will be quite close, but if uh, a vector comes like this. So, obviously, in this particular case is not aligning with any of the fault, but they are close to 4 and 5. So, we can able to attach some kind of a probability along with the because the fault 4 and 5 both are there is a possibility, but we can able to attach the probability of the 4 is this much and maybe 60 percent and uh, 40 percent for the 5 that kind of uh, based on the vector we can able to estimate the probability of the fault if there are multiple faults appearing in the uh, that particular machine. So, this is a very abstract definition how we can able to identify the fault using this enormous amount of data. So, this kind of uh, technique can be used to predict the fault in a, a machine. Now, coming to the prognostics uh, there are several things uh, which we can able to predict like uh, remaining useful life of the machine. So, how much time is left before a failure occurs or one or more fault appears given the current machine condition and the past operation profile. So, once we have the condition based data based on that and previous uh, history of the machine whether we can able to predict the remaining useful life of the machine. This very pertinent uh, prognostic prediction will be there for a, a machine. Apart from this, this prognostics incorporating maintenance policies, optimize the maintenance policies according to the certain criteria such as risk, cost, reliability and availability. So, this if we can able to integrate the prognostic along with the maintenance policy that could that will be very useful. Then third is the condition monitoring intervals uh, periodic continuous. So, depending upon the type of machine and critically of the machine we can able to decide you know, whether uh, a particular machine requires the periodic man, uh, monitoring or continuous monitoring. This is a typical uh, 
on site model of a condition monitoring system in which there is a power plants at different locations. We are extracting the data uh, from this various kind of data we are storing at one place and there is an expert system uh, based on the database of or the history of the uh, plant and this database and the uh, whatever the uh, online data which is coming to the system through net can go uh, to various web servers and from there uh, experts can view this and they can see the condition of the machine and if there is some unusual uh, case they can uh, able to pinpoint that there is some fault is, has already appeared in some machine component or some uh, supplant or it is uh, going to happen. So, that kind of uh, uh, interface we can able to build for such large uh, systems. Apart from this, uh, this is some other uh, requirement of the condition based monitoring which we may look into that the one is the cost, the low cost to so, system should be implemented by virtual instruments. So, it should uh, we should have low cost of the CMB program portable it should be useful it, it, again I am repeating portable it should be used with uh, notebook, PC, ha handheld computer, mobile phones, wireless communication etcetera easy to use detection of fault via instant exact wavelength analysis, active noise cancellation and 3D trend plot etcetera. These are some other requirements automatic report generation and alarm condition monitoring using automatic logging function, web and mobile based remote sensing and monitoring, user friendly training video for self learning. So, these are the some of the uh, requirement of CMB should have. Now, after discussing uh, very general uh, uh, topic the on the condition based monitoring, again we will take up uh, some uh, case studies. So, to start with we will take case study of uh, gear in which various kind of faults have been introduced and uh, based on the vibration signature the type of fault and uh, and uh, the detection of the fault uh, will uh, will be doing it. So, in this particular case we have a double stage uh, gear. So, you can able to see this is the input gear and this is the line diagram of that gear. So, input shaft there is a pinion 24 uh, teeth is there and then this is a gear 60 teeth. Then this second stage in which 36 and 46 are the number of teeth. So, this is the output shaft. Now, two stage transmission there are two meshing frequencies because one between these two gear and another between these two gear and uh, these are named as uh, F 1, F M 1 and F M 2 and you can able to calculate this. So, first is between these two that is uh, so, the input shaft speed is this one F i and if you multiply by the number of teeth of the pinion we will get the F 1 F 1 we will get the F M 1. So, this is one of the tooth meshing frequency. We could have taken uh, this t number of teeth and the speed of the shaft this one we could have got the same value. Another pair is this one. So, in, in this uh, you can able to see that uh, the speed of this particular uh, gear. So, we are taking the speed of this gear and the number of teeth of this. So, this is the reduction with uh, in the first stage and if we multiply with the number of teeth of this we will get the uh, tooth meshing frequency for the second pair. So, tooth meshing frequency is a for pair not for a particular gear. So, this is for first pair and the second pair. So, we have this two uh, tooth meshing frequency we should expect in the vibration spectra apart from the rotational frequency of the uh, the input shaft. These are the various uh, gears and especially the fault. So, you can able to see in the first one a small uh, chip tooth. So, a small uh, tooth has been chipped off. This is a large chip tooth has been removed and another one in which the whole teeth has been removed. So, there are three level of fault in which all of them are having fault related with the tooth of the gear. 
So, this is a typical signal, this is the gearbox acceleration spectra of baseline data, first is without load and second one is the with load. So, as pointed out earlier, whatever the dynamics is going on at the gear will reflect at the bearing location or, or that bearing location is because the bearing is mounted on uh, gear box. So, we can able to take the signal from there and that will reflect the dynamics of the gear. So, this is a typical uh, signal. So, you can able to see the f. So, first uh, gear mesh frequency there is a peak for second one there is a large peak. Here also we have the value is uh, around 4 to 5 that means this is the first one 4 to 1 is this one red one and this f m 2 is this one that is 8 53 around. So, this is for f m 2 and this is for f 1 f m 1. Apart from that there will be some other peaks corresponding to the structure of the gear box and other things, but we must see we try to see the peaks. Basically, this is a cursor which is showing the red line, but this peak is small you can able to see the peaks are small, but this is red dots are the cursor. So, in this two stage gear transmission process two meshing frequency are there two stages are there. So, when the input shaft speed is little bit less that is 60 hertz for this has been measured f the first and the second mesh frequencies are roughly 1425 and 85454. So, you can able to see that these are matching with the actual experimental data. So, this is 1 and this is 1. So, the theoretically calculated and the experimentally measured uh, frequencies are matching. Then this is the with the test with a small chip tooth. So, with this obviously, we expect uh, uh, the amplitude of the vibrations will increase. So, in this you can able to see the 24 tooth pinion gear with a smaller chip chip was used in this test. The F m 1 is barely seen. So, this is not uh, visible here. However, the second harmonics of the uh, two missing frequencies are detected. So, uh, basically you can able to uh, we are not seeing the first harmonic, but second harmonic of the uh, this particular mesh frequencies are appearing in the spectra. So, the 1725 that is this one and the second harmonic of this is 2846, 24 you can able to see here. So, some higher multiples of the harmonic of the mesh frequencies are visible, uh, but F m 2 is more predominant, but F m 1 is not that much predominant, but second harmonics are picking up. Okay. So, then the next is this uh, you can able to see the side band presented about the second missing frequency. So, we have this is the second mesh frequency, this is the side band. So, you can able to see this is coming from the uh, modulation of the rotational speed of the input shaft. So, the difference between this frequency and the shaft frequency is giving as a side band. Similarly, multiple of that. So, f m 2 minus 2 f i this we already seen in, in the previous lecture that we can have uh, one carrier frequency and modulated frequency then we can have this kind of side band, but in one side only that side bands are more predominant for this particular case. The shaft speed is 60 hertz in this particular case. Now, uh, this particular uh, signal is with a large chip tooth the previous uh, uh, signal was for small chip tooth. So, in this uh, you can able to see that the 24 tooth gear with a larger chip was used in this test. It can be seen that the F m 2 component and its second harmonics are dominant in the spectra. That means, this is uh, F m 2, but the second harmonic this is first harmonic of F m 2. So, they are predominant F 1 f m 1 is not that much predominant here also and strong side bands are presented about both components. So, side bands are also there we will see the zoom view of this also. Again the overall vibration level of the uh, 
loaded case is higher even the the vibration signal level if we see this will be higher as compared to the uh, the previous one. So, this uh, is the with the missing tooth the, the most severe fault in which the tooth itself is removed completely. So, in this you can able to uh, see let us. So, this is the most severe fault of all tests the input gear has a missing tooth. In the previous figure it can be seen that the amplitude of the side bend 796 and 736 are even higher than the uh, missing frequency. So, 796. So, so in this uh, FM 2 is more predominant, but there are side bends they are quite predominant here also uh, here side bend is more predominant you can able to see 853 these are uh, these are side bends F m 1 is present here F here the second harmonic of the F m 1 is more predominant. So, this kind of modulation can take place in such even in the loaded condition the side bends mentioned above have higher amplitude than all other rotational related component except F m 2 component itself. So, side bend is one particular phenomena which we could able to observe in such kind of uh, fault. This is the basically zoom view of the previous slide. So, in this you can able to see that this is F m 2 there is a modulated frequency that is side bend F m 2 minus F i corresponding to the spin speed of the shaft and this is a F m 2 minus 2 twice of F i. So, these are the side bends which are predominant more than the actual uh, this uh, tooth missing frequency because of the severity of the fault. This is another zoom view of the same figure. So, in this you can able to see F uh, additionally we have uh, 2 F m 1 that is uh, in the higher range we have shown here and there is side bend. So, side bend is more predominant than the actual tooth missing frequency of the first uh, tooth missing frequency. So, here it has been modulated uh, even this is the higher harmonics of the tooth missing frequency second harmonic of the tooth missing frequency and side bend of that here also the higher uh, side, side bends twice of uh, spin speed of the shaft. Now, we will take up uh, some more case studies especially uh, of the fans which are there in the uh, industry. So, in this particular case, uh, so we are, we are descri uh, describing about the industrial fans. So, each time a blade passes a point in space or an obstruction, an impulse force fluctuation is expect, uh, experienced by the fluid or the solid body at the point. If a fan with n blades is running at uh, f s r p m, then the number of impulses experienced per second will be n there is a number of blade into the speed of the fan. So, this is the this is uh, called the blade passing frequency as we had the tooth missing frequency similar to that blade passing frequency is there B P F. This frequency is inherent in pumps, fans and compressor normally it does not present a problem. So, normally it, it will not create any problem, but if there is some fault then uh, we can have the difficulty in the uh, th in this particular frequency. However, large amplitude of uh, BPF component and its harmonics can be generated in pumps or fan rotor system. If gap between rotating fan and the stationary diffuser is not equal and all the uh, not equal all way round. So, in the whole circumference if that gap is not equal then we can have this kind of uh, large amplitude at uh, bliss blade passing frequency. Uh, these different, different gaps will cause air flow rate of the pump or fan to vary, which makes the static and dynamic pressures of the blade changes as well. As a response to the fluctuation of these pressure, uh, pressure loads, the larger amplitude of the BPF component will be generated. So, for a uh, pure tone signal that is let us say this is a, a signal sin omega t. If its amplitude is modulated by another waveform uh, like this, then 
using trigonometric equation we can able to see that there will be not only the uh, add and subtract of these two frequency uh, modulation will take place. So, here as we have explained earlier also omega c is the carrier frequency and omega m is the modulation frequency. So, we can able to see these side bands in such uh, system. So, it, it is it, it can be clearly seen that the beside the carrier frequency component two side bands with frequency of the summation of two frequency and difference of this frequency are also present in the modulated spectrum. For fan vibration signal the BPF and its harmonics are the carrier frequency and the rotating speed of the is the uh, modulation frequency. Since the BPF and its harmonics are higher than the rotating frequency the amplitude modulation caused by 1 x vibration result in side bands of BPF component. Uh, as shown in the next figure. So, you can able to see that this is the BPF and there are side bands corresponding to 1 x uh, rpm of the uh, rot uh, rotor speed. This is the second BPF higher harmonics of that and we have uh, side bands of that and these are due to the unbalance 1 x and 2 x corresponding to the rotor speed. This is a typical uh, fan so, before and after installation the observation in the 12 blade axial fan. So, there are 12 blade uh, axial fan and this we put uh, uh, this is uh, taken from spectra quest lecture notes. So, this is the obstruction which was put here. So, that uh, we can get some kind of disturbance and this is a typical signal in this. So, we can able to see there is a 1 x 1, one blade passing frequency is this one and there are side bands to that. This is component of the 16 x of the rotational speed. This is twice um, of the blade passing frequency peaks. So, this kind of spectra we can able to expect from such blades. In the present uh, lecture I gave a brief uh, introduction to the condition based monitoring which itself is a big uh, subject and research area. So, in a single lecture it is very difficult to uh, cover all the aspect of the condition based monitoring, but I try to give uh, various basic component of uh, that particular condition based monitoring in which obviously, the first component is the uh, co collection of the data, second is the analysis of the data, third is decision making based on the whatever the data we collected and analyzed. So, that was the uh, overall overview of the condition based monitoring we presented in the present lecture. Apart from that few more case studies on gears and fans we presented and we try to see that how this uh, condition based monitoring or especially looking into the signal uh, we can able to detect the fault in the uh, rotating machinery. Uh, with this uh, we basically conclude uh, this particular subject uh, of rotor dynamics uh, lecture. So, generally this particular uh, subject is taught as elective in our institute and uh, this particular uh, lecture generally we cover in 40 to 42 lectures, but with the uh, with the powerpoint presentation uh, we could able to put more information and more illustrations in, in these lectures and hopefully it will be useful for the students as well as practicing engineers in, in India and all over the world. Now, I would like to acknowledge some of the people who were behind uh, this uh, preparation of these lectures. So, basically you can able to see uh, all the Amtech students and PhD students who took rotor dynamics course uh, under me from uh, 1999 up to uh, 2012. They contributed in this particular subject. Uh, their dis discussion with them were very helpful and uh, uh, because of uh, the motivation from them only I could able to develop this particular lecture notes. And apart from this uh, video recording and editing staff at CET they were very helpful in recording and editing of this particular video lectures I am thankful to all of them. Apart from my family obviously because uh, without their patience 
uh, you are not able to concentrate on developing this particular course. So, I, I acknowledge them also. Mm -hmm.